All right, Doombots, we have uh, another team review. Unfortunately, I have to break my rule. I usually like to wait for all the characters on a team, or at least all of the important characters on a team, to become farmable in the game uh, before I do a team review. But uh, as it's been like eight months and we still don't have Taskmaster, I'm just going to go ahead and assume that we're never going to, and I'm going to do this review anyway, because at this point, you might buy Taskmaster, you might get him in an orb, uh, same thing with the Hydra characters. So you're going to see all the team reviews that I've been waiting on, including the Black Order, uh, start coming out now. So, and this is going to be the first one because it's probably the easiest one for most people to work on. And that is the Mercenaries, as you can see by that sign. So uh, just a quick little approach to the Mercenaries. They are a war defense team. Uh, there is about eight or nine characters with the Merc tag. There might be more or less as time goes on, but there are just pure mercs. There are mercs that have other tags like Deadpool and Killmonger. And ultimately, it doesn't really matter uh, what version of this team you use because this team is built on three people. And we're going to take a quick look at this team and talk about the availability of them and a little bit about where they're useful. So in order to do that, we're going to head on over to Blitz and we're going to just do a quick auto fight as we talk about the game. So this particular iteration of the Mercs team is the one that I use for pretty much everything. Uh, war defense, blitz, uh, anything that requires mercenary characters, I'd probably use this comp. To talk about the availability, the most of the Mercs are available on nodes. Small exception is just one, technically. Merc Riot Guard is only available in the Arena Store, I believe, right now. Uh, other than that, the rest of the mercs are all node farmable at least, with the only exception being Killmonger, who is a mercenary Wakandan available in the raid store, uh, Taskmaster, who's currently only available through random luck in orbs or paying for him, uh, and that's pretty much it. So the mercs are a relatively easy access early farm, and uh, the earlier you were to get a character like Taskmaster, they might even be a very good early team because the mercs are useful for some content in the game, uh, not just crazy endgame content, but they are useful for the uh, what I consider the most important event that we have to do, the uh, gold event, the gold rush event. You require a team of five X star mercenaries, X being one through seven, uh, in order to accomplish tasks and get a giant influx of gold every month. That's usually, I believe, the second weekend of every month. Uh, or third. I, I always forget which one because there's so many of those events that come up now. So that's pretty much the basics of the Mercs. Now let's take a quick look at the Mercs team themselves and let, let figure out where we're going to use them both as a team and maybe independently. So this is all of the Mercs. Now as I mentioned, there's about nine of them. Uh, Killmonger is a Merc Wakandan. Deadpool is a Merc X Force character. Korath, hiding behind me, is a mercenary Cree, kind of not good at either, but, you know, there are some situations where you can use a Korath. Uh, and the core of the Merc's team is Merc Riot Guard, Merc Lieutenant, and Taskmaster. The other two characters are basically whom you have. Uh, I remember in a time before the re rework and Taskmaster showing up, I think I did it with Merc Riot Guard, Merc Lieutenant, Killmonger, Deadpool, and Bullseye, but that's just you using what you have access to. Uh, as you can see, the other mercenary minions, Merc Soldier and Merc Sniper, they don't add much to the team. I wouldn't consider them a core part of the team in general, but if for some reason you decided, I love the Mercs and max them all out, you might be able to splash them in on that team to get a little bit of extra value to make sure that most of the characters uh, are where they're supposed to be. Killmonger on the Wakandans, Deadpool on the X-Force, etc., etc., etc. But that's only for stuff like Blitz. You really don't have to worry about too much of that anyway. Uh, talking about like their usability, so the Mercs do have access to nodes. There, there's some nodes that you need to use Mercenaries on. I believe that to be in the Gamma Raids. Uh, there are nodes that say, like, you need Mercs. Uh, and of course, as we just mentioned, there is the monthly gold event happens the second or third week of every month uh, and you need the mercs to complete it so just in that value 
you're going to eventually need to work on the mercs. I don't think it's important to max them out and get that gold because while gold is one of the most important bottlenecks in this game, the amount you spend to work on these characters to get more gold only matters if you have things to spend the gold on and it's kind of like the defenders fallacy where the defenders are good for the block party event so if you work on them you'll be able to complete the seven star block party event but at the cost of only having the defenders to invest your tier fours in which makes you invest your tier fours in your defenders which leaves you with a really strong useless team so that's kind of the same with the mercs uh their their biggest thing about the mercs is they are a war defense team and one of the most beautiful things about them is they kind of don't care how strong they are when you go up against mercs i like to have this philosophy where uh basically there's two types of teams in war uh there's 350k teams and lower and there's 351k teams and higher 350k teams uh can usually be beaten by 200 to 250k teams so if you have a 350k mercs team you find the hard counter for them with the x-force or maybe the brotherhood they should be able to punch up about 100k and that's usually the limit basically at 350k or less 100k punch up is a reasonable expectation of, of punch up for the fight uh, and that's not really paying attention to like key investments or anything that's just a general principle if you get a little bit stronger you know than 100k if you're 80k punch up you'll probably be more better off than you would normally uh, and the other side around is once it's 450k the requirement to beat them is no longer about 100k. Uh, it, it just the investment alone on the X Force team to be able to punch up a 400 against the 400k mercenaries, assuming Taskmaster is one of the strongest ones and Killmonger is up there too. The they're just not going to be able to to put up the damage and get through the defense that the mercenaries put off on defense. So that's just a little statement for that. But as a rule when your team is good on war defense and more specifically when your team requires a very specific answer you don't actually need to have them that strong uh, it's not incredibly important because if a team requires an answer especially in the early stages of war you're basically playing the gambit of how many answers do my opponents at my 2 million 3 million 4 million average tcp you know, Alliance member roster have? How many X-Force teams do they have? How many Brotherhood teams do they have? And more importantly, uh, am I taxing them? All early wars are about how you can tax your opponent. Technically, so are late wars, just a very different style of taxing. So for my money, and I always tell people, if you look at teams like the Mercs or Hydra or Colson Shield, any of those teams that are like require a specific response, you don't actually have to invest too much in them. You can invest in a key character, like a Killmonger or a Taskmaster, like a Merc Riot Guard, Merc Lieutenant, something like that. But you that team is just as terrifying at 75k as it is at 200k. The only comparison is where you stand when you're going up against them. So when I look at war defense only teams, Unless they have splash value in other game modes that is incredibly relevant, I really don't pay attention. And as you can see, my mercenary team, which you just saw in that fight, is Merc Rat Guard, Killmonger, Merc Lieutenant, Taskmaster, and Bullseye. And that team is barely 200k, maybe a little bit higher. Uh, and I have no intention of really working on them uh, until, of course, Taskmaster becomes farmable. But they do what they're supposed to do which is force an opponent to have a specific answer this way they can't use that answer later it also forces them to use the answer now so maybe if the right player isn't online someone punches down a very great deal and i consider that a win because somewhere else there might be a stronger mercs team or team that whatever team they use like brotherhood would counter that they just can't so noted it's acceptable that's kind of the power line, I would say, for teams like this, especially when it comes to war defense teams. But that's pretty much across the board. Now, use the exact opposite as Guardians. As Guardians are really good uh, to use as well as defense, so there's really no in issue with investing in them, that kind of thing. Uh, 
So we're good on the usability of these guys. Let's now take a quick step back and just look at tier fours and a little bit of ISOs. I don't like to go into too much detail, but you know, just a little bit of advice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna completely skip Merc Soldier and Merc Sniper because I don't care about your Merc Soldier and your Merc Sniper. You should not use them. I don't care if they're seven red stars. I don't care if they're gear tier 14. If they are, there's a mistake that you made that you have to rectify or be punished for. Either of those makes sense. But Merc Soldier, Merc Sniper, we're not including them in this comp. Even if you're using them early on, the information I'm about to give when it comes to like tier four investment and where is relevant will never apply to them. So we're skipping right over them. Bullseye is the first check at this. Uh, never miss. He gives accuracy to allies, which technically allows them to hit through a blind kind of relevant in certain fights uh but really not quite worth tier fouring kill shot uh it's just a flat 50 percent damage going up from 500 yeah he does have an increased crit chance on this attack uh but it's only for this attack so and it, it you know it starts with zero energy so he never gets to do it if bullseye had gotten a little bit of an energy boost if he did this on turn two uh or even maybe turn three like human torch would be okay but really by the time this attack's going off you're really already done i will say though one of the biggest things for his kit is on war defense he assists merc uh allies on non-attack abilities and two of the merc allies that you're always going to use have non-attack abilities and they're doing them all the time so you're getting a lot of extra damage, so it's kind of relevant uh, to kind of keep track of, of how much crit damage uh, or how much uh, attack damage they're doing. So for Bullseye, uh, damage is acceptable. Uh, Raider, ISO 8, Striker, ISO 8 is acceptable. And because he's assisting non-attack abilities, Skirmisher is also acceptable on Bullseye. But then again, he's Bullseye. Who cares? Uh, moving on to the next one, we have Korath, the Pursuer. Uh, he has better uses in other places. That doesn't mean you wouldn't use him here. He does count for the mercs. Uh, he's a fast damage dealing character. The two turns of speed up doesn't actually matter. The mercs are really fast on their own, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, takedown shot is what he's going to do on turn one. Apply heal block, 50% chance to apply ability block. The increase in damage at level seven is huge. It's 120%, uh, so it goes to, you know, 570. But. It doesn't guarantee the ability block, so it's just damage. If you are using him or if you uh, will need him to get more damage out, this is a fine tier 4, but he's not really a part of the final comp. He's better used on other setups, uh, and we probably haven't really experienced what the best setup for Korath is yet because the Kree are kind of useless for the most part. Uh, target lock. This one's kind of weird. It applies taunt to a character and gain an assist from an ally, but there's a higher chance that a Merc or Kree will assist him. Uh, this attack is great, the apply of taunt. Uh, this goes outside of any other assist that might occur, like through Taskmaster, which we'll see in a sec, but the 750% uh, the focus on this attack. He basically just wants to apply taunt, and taunt, while it is a positive effect, can be resisted. Uh, the tier four is 60% damage, that's not rear most of the damage from this attack's coming in. It's mostly coming from the assist uh, and the fact that you're choosing a target to apply taunt. So this isn't really a high damage attack. I'm skipping it. Uh, and smart rifle, it's uh, nine. You know the difference between ninety percent and a hundred percent? Because I don't, I don't really notice when he doesn't apply slow. So ten percent piercing. So uh, sorry if it was. This number is too low, so we're not putting any tier 4s in, in Korath. Uh, now we'll move to Taskmaster. Taskmaster has some justifiable uses outside of the Mercs team. Uh, obviously, War Defense uh, and PvP. So, I will say that there are some tier 4s you might want to invest in him, but since all PvP should be balanced anyway, it's up to you. Taking a quick look, Copycat Criminal... Uh, always gain assist now on mercs. This is pretty mandatory uh, if your mercs team is starting to push to the harder difficulties. Like once you get past that threshold I told you about, once they're about like 300k and you're trying to make them a real strong team, this is one of the best abilities because he's always, uh, always going to assist, which is where you can get value out of his skirmisher tag. 
because he'll just be either applying or removing buffs on every assist, or just plain damage. If you're pretty confident in his ability to just murder something, you can just go ahead and do that. Uh, I wouldn't go with Raider too much on him, though. The crit's not very relevant. You get 25% block chance. Um, the block amount doesn't change. 10% chance to counterattack for self and per mercenary ally. It goes to 20, so it's a guaranteed counterattack every time he's hit. And 5% damage for self and all mercenary villains. This is pretty much uh, one of the most important things. As a matter of fact, I'm shocked I haven't done it yet. I actually never noticed. Uh, but for what it's worth, this is kind of required. So it's also one of the best things you can put on him because of how the mercs work on their own. Uh, but it is the war defense buff. So you always have to be careful if you're putting uh, a tier 4 in a character that's exclusively for war defense. This really does break him out a little bit. Moving to Incendiary Arrow, uh, you get a slight increase to damage. Uh, the blind goes to two targets, which is incredibly huge. Bleed goes to all enemies. Oh, I'm sorry, three versus all, uh, and 20% piercing. This is another great tier four uh, ability upgrade for war defense. Uh, I don't really care for it that much, but I do think this is incredibly important. And if it's, you know, you're very limited on tier fours for your war defense team. I'm pretty sure it's just all Taskmaster tier fours. I don't think anyone else requires any, but. You know, we'll kind of look a little bit more. This is another absolutely great one for that. Uh, you get a little bit more value out of this outside of war uh, because it doesn't require war for anything, but it is what it is. If you've ever done PvP and used Taskmaster uh, and Balance, you'll know that that attack is absolutely insane. Adaptive Assault, uh, just damage increase, no notes. Imitating Strike, just damage increase but it does increase the damage of his assist so that's a little bit better and the steel doesn't change at level six so you can get away with just these two and call it a day moving to the next one we have merc lieutenant so merc lieutenant's weird because he's kind of a healer but he's not and he's kind of a support character but he isn't uh and he kind of helps everybody but he doesn't and the most important thing is he has no health he literally has no health Nothing you can do will give him health. He just doesn't have it. Doesn't come to him. So when you talk about ISOs on him, people say healer to boost the amount of healing he does, but he does shit healing. So why? Just give him anything else. As a matter of fact, honestly, you probably want to give him Fortifier, which I know sounds silly, but he needs to stay alive. Uh, you can also justify, you know, Skirmisher or Striker if you need to get those little bit of extra damages in, but we'll go into that at another time uh on turn 10 percent chance to heal most plus 10 percent chance sorry so it's a 40 percent chance the difference between 30 and 40 is almost negligible uh unless it's the ai then it happens all the time and then it gets 25 percent of this character's max health the reason it's 25 percent is because he has no health so for mine right now with 90k health it'll heal for like 20k that's okay if it's a mercenary it goes to like 28k hooray uh when a non-mercenary Non-summon mercenary ally drops below 50%. Fill this character speed bar by 25. Uh, it goes up to 40%. Reasonable. Um, but since he's the one who's probably going to die first, doesn't happen too often. Uh, and on war defense, when enemy attacks this character or an adjacent ally, this is where it's relevant. Heal most injured ally for 1,000 flat health plus 10%. So 10,000 in, in the case of mine, just to keep the numbers like real for everybody. Uh, that number goes up by 500, so 10,500. Obviously, the more investment he is, the better those will be. It's more about how often it happens than about how big it is. That said, I, I really haven't found a need to do this. My mercs are either getting punched down on by teams that are stronger than them or are doing, you know, like getting an occasional win from someone who's underestimating them. Uh, this is an acceptable tier four, though, just for that conversation. Call the shots. Uh, offense up to all allies as opposed to uh, four random allies or self. Speed up to four random allies or self. It is four random allies or self, so it's not everybody as it is. Uh, this tier four would guarantee that everybody gets offense up. That said, it happens literally every other turn. So... And your mercs are pretty fast. So... It's okay. It's not amazing. But it's okay. 
uh, damage, but guaranteed grant uh, one ability energy to all Mercs allies. Um, yeah, versus three random Mercs villain allies. Huge. Uh, the, the thing is, he's doing this in alternating turns. So, like, turn one, he's going to use his special. Turn two, he's going to cover fire. Then he's going to special. Then he's going to cover fire. Then he's going to... You get how it's going to work. So, it's a good one. Um, that said, uh, the difference between... Because he doesn't count himself, at least as far as I've seen. Uh, one extra character might be the difference maker. So, if you really are going hard on the mercs, then this is probably a good one. But... I don't really see too much value in it. Uh, Deadpool is a Merc. That said, none of his abilities uh, at Tier 4 matter for Mercenaries at all. Uh, heal for Max Hell. This is just a decent ability. It was okay on X-Force. It's okay here. But since it, you know, chance to generate ability energy for Allied Cable and he's not on this team, it doesn't help the Mercs that much. This is just damage. Also just damage, and I'm pretty sure also just damage. So, really doesn't need any tier 4s. For the Mercs team, we want to go check the X-Force video if you want to know a little bit more about him as a character and how he works on that team. Uh, Killmonger. So, Killmonger is a psychopath uh, and works very well with the Mercs. Almost better than he works with the Wakandans, especially with tier 4s now allowing him to have the Raider tier 4. There really is no other option but Raider on Killmonger. Killmonger's... Uh, entire kit is based on how often he does or doesn't crit. Because of that, uh, <laughs> he's critting all the time. Uh, and remember, all his charge does is increase his crit rate. So basically, since he multi-attacks all the time and he's constantly critting, you want to increase his crit chance as high as you possibly can, get him close to 50 or 60%. So every attack he has, especially on multi-attacks, has a chance to crit and do some other cool thing it's trying to do. Take a quick look at his tier 4s. On defense up, attack the most injured enemy. So on the Mercs, the reason this is so amazing, and this is a really good tier 4 investment, is because not only does uh, you know he get the defense up from the next character who we're going to look at, Merc Riot Guard, but he's, it doesn't count if he gets it from zero. So if he has defense up already and someone applies defense up to him, it still counts as him getting defense up, almost like refreshes the defense up that's on him. Uh, it doesn't make a difference for the gameplay, but... It does proc this ability. So tier 4 this, which I did, uh, brought it up to 330% damage. It's basically free damage. Can't really get away with it. But it also, you know, good decent drain. On kill, he heals himself. Crit uh, chance per charge. Pretty decent. No notes there. Battle Frenzy. Uh, again, just damage. Uh, it says chain to 5 additional targets. Uh, in war, you really aren't going to experience... Five versus all, plus if placement's kind of wonky or if he hits the wrong target, it's not going to jump over targets, so really doesn't make too much of a difference how many targets he chains to. The small amount of damage increase is okay. Uh, on crit, attack all enemies for 200 versus 175% damage. It's a small damage increase, I will say. It is a small damage increase, but it kind of counts because technically you're hitting everybody and you're probably going to crit, uh, so it's an extra... You know, 25% overall, maybe totally 40% damage, considering he might not hit everybody. It's not bad, but not really worth a tier 4 for me. Full auto, uh, attack primary target for, if you tier 4, 200% damage three times. On crit, gain offense up and lose charge. Otherwise, gain one charge to maximum. Uh, it does happen in between the hits. You'll notice it. So some hits might be stronger than others. Uh, it's a good attack. It is 600% damage. You know, it's three times. So it's 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 a big jump uh, and a very good tier four investment on him. Uh, honestly, I think all of his tier fours are acceptable as the character he is now. Where you use him, I don't think it makes too much of a difference. Same thing with his basic. I think his basic was kind of like messed up originally didn't do as much it used to say 330 and then 330 again now it's a little bit less it's still a ton of extra attack damage uh on crit bonus attack two times so it's a guaranteed double attack if you crit and since crit's the name of the game for him it's a lot of extra damage a little bit of drain so nothing absolutely crazy there but remember if you kill him you get that big 10 percent heal too at the end um no real notes here and just to remind you that he gains 20% crit chance per charge. 
So it's possible that you get to enough crit through the team building that you only ever need one charge to break a 100% crit chance. So he's only ever maybe not critting every one attack, not even turn attack, because all of his attacks are multi-hits. Um, so it's pretty reasonable. Other than that, we have the last character. Now you're going to ask Tony, why is your Merc Riot Guard so strong? Because I love Merc Riot Guard. Truly, he's like one of my favorite tanks in the game because he actually tanks. Uh, tier 4, I put healer on him because he's already one of the best tanks in the game. He doesn't need more survivability, but uh, he does have a pretty decent chunk of health. Not great. He's going quite often on the Merc's team. Um, you can argue for literally anything. The problem is he's not attacking too often. So I went healer on him. I like to put healer on characters that have pretty decent health pool and go quickly. Riot Suppression, 5% block chance, uh, so it goes to 25% versus 20%. Okay. On War Defense, uh, always apply Deflect to 1, uh, to sell uh, Jason Allies up to 4, um, but versus 75%. So I think you get away with not investing in this. I don't necessarily know, you know... On enemy turn, 75%. That means four enemies have to go before you ever miss one on average. Uh, and since the, the flex stack, those enemies have to constantly be AoEing for them to not make a difference. It does make, you know, mercenary placement relevant, but uh, for me, it's not really there. And then 10% block chance per Merc ally. Well, there's four Merc allies. Uh, his base block chance is 20. 60. With this 5%, it goes to uh, 65. I'm not... Eh. It's okay. It's not bad. It's fine. Rampart? No. Worst tier 4 in the game. Let me explain to you why. Uh, gain taunt for one turn. Gain defense up on self for two turns. Apply defense up to four most injured allies for one turn. Level 7. Gain defense up on self for three turns. Let's do the math on this real quick, okay? So I have two energy, and I gain defense up for two turns. My next turn, I lose a defense up, and I gain an energy. The turn after it, I lose a defense up. Oh my god, I'm at two energy again. I do it again. This tier four literally does nothing. L does nothing. He doesn't gain up to a stack of defense ups, and even if he did, it wouldn't matter, because every time he's using this ability, which he's using on cooldown every second turn, he's giving defense up. <laughs> Literally does nothing. How do they How do they let this happen? All right. Uh, combat pistol, just damage, no notes. So there's really only one tier 4 here. You know, any tier 4s in Killmonger are fine. Taskmaster, any tier 4s are fine. Probably starting with these two, and the rest are just questionable for damage. Uh, and Merc Lieutenant Squad Coherency is okay. Call the Shots is okay. Cover Fires, these are all okay. Um, so there are quite a bit of, of tier 4s you can put in these guys, but it really depends on what. So as a, a rating for this team, uh, unfortunately, uh, this is a B team. Uh, they are quite literally useful in a, in a handful of places, but they are by no means good anywhere. Um, if they were good on both sides of the war, I would say they might be upgraded to a little bit like B plus, A minus kind of team. Uh, if they had a, a raid node that you needed them for as opposed to could use them for, eh, honestly, you can use them on any of the raid nodes that you would use the defenders, and they both have equal value. So... If you're if you if your comparison pool is the defenders, like be better than the defenders is not really hard. Uh, that's it. They're just they're okay, you know, for lack of it. They're just okay. So uh, hopefully that was in useful information, and hopefully you take to heart the idea that you really don't have to overinvest in war defense teams. The only time you should start investing in them is when it's you know. The most important thing for you is to make sure that you're getting a couple more defense wins, or if you just want a stronger Blitz team, you know, either of those things work. So comment below, let me know uh, if you accidentally tier forward Merc Riot Guard special, or uh, basically if you're noticing any problems with 
your fights against the mercs or if you're noticing your mercs are getting defense wins against good fights or anything like that. So feel free to post in the comments. Anyway, have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.